Okay, let's get to Balenciaga. <laughs> you guys, I don't know if you've been following this online, but this is really, really something. So of course, luxury fashion house, storied, renowned fashion house, Balenciaga. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. Under fire over what they describe here in the New York Post as creepy ads, I would say disgusting, disturbing ads, of kids with bondage outfits. Uh, we are not going to put these photos up on the screen, mm -hmm. um, but I will describe them to you. Young children, I'm talking maybe four years old, standing and uh, positioned in somewhat suggestive positions, holding these teddy bears that are wearing BDSM gear. Um, in some of the pictures, there's also other like, ch like, chain choker looking things in the pictures. Um, and it is incredibly disturbing. And you're just looking at it, you're like, how in the hell did this get greenlit by anyone, let alone actually go forward and become a major ad campaign and get released to the public with no one going, what the hell are you thinking about here? So there's been huge fallout from this, obviously, because Balenciaga is associated with all sorts of celebrities, including in particular Kim Kardashian. They'd already dropped Kanye, mm. so I guess he doesn't have to say anything right. about it, but they were still associated with Kim Kardashian. She just put out a statement. She says, I've been quiet for the past few days, not because I haven't been disgusted and outraged by the recent Balenciaga campaigns, but because I wanted an opportunity to speak to their team to understand for myself how this could have happened, question we all have, as a mother of four, I've been shaken by the disturbing images. The safety of children must be held with the highest regard and any attempts to normalize child abuse of any kind should have no place in our society, period. I appreciate Balenciaga's removal of the campaigns and their apology and speaking with them. I believe they understand the seriousness of the issue and will take the necessary measures for this to never happen again. As for my future with Balenciaga, I'm currently re-evaluating my relationship mm. with the brand, basing it off their willingness to accept accountability for something that should have never happened to begin with and the actions I am expecting to see them take to protect children. So she's taking a little bit of a wait and see yeah. attitude here ultimately. People after this uh, disturbing, uh, really terrible ad campaign came to light with these kids and the bondage bears and whatever the hell was going on there. Um, people also found another ad campaign where on a desk were strewn some papers that look just sort of like casually laid out. And some of the papers, if you look closely, are to uh, involve, like, involve a landmark legal case, mm -hmm. which w is with regard to child pornography. So people looked at that too and are like, what the hell is going on at Balenciaga? Now they've put out, they apologized, they put out their own statement, um, they also, by the way, which I think is, I don't know, uh, they're suing one of the, the companies that put, that produced the ad, I think that in particular had the like child porn legal document situation. They say, we'd like to address the controversy surrounding our ad campaigns. We strongly condemn child abuse. Abuse. It was never our intent to include it in our narrative. The two separate ad campaigns in question reflect a series of grievous errors for which Balenciaga takes responsibility. Um, the first campaign they say, the one with the kids and the BDSM bears. They say it was a wrong choice by Balenciaga combined with our failure in assessing and validating images. The responsibility for this lies with Balenciaga alone. And then with the other one regarding the legal papers, they try to shift blame to uh, the ad company and say, listen, we take full accountability for a lack of oversight and control. They should have uh, not had those documents in the background, but they didn't really know what was going on. And now, then they go through, we're conducting investigations investigations, closely revising our organization, collective ways of working, reinforcing the structures around our creative processes and validation steps. And we're laying the groundwork with organizations who specialize in child protection and aims at ending child abuse and exploitation. So yeah. there you go. I don't even really know what to make of this. I mean, clearly there's a sick person who was involved and maybe multiple sick people who, I mean, I, here's something I believe. There, I don't believe for a second that those papers just ended up on the desk in the photo by accident. That's I just don't believe it. So yeah. weird. They claim that it came from a TV set, and I'm like, you randomly grabbed it's from a TV Some set, child real porn, court legal case documents. involving into child porn. Yeah, something tells me that there's a sick individual involved in this process. But I mean, it does go to a really gross element on Balenciaga's part, which is, you know, they claim independence from this entire ad campaign, but I'm not so sure because there have been other allegations around like having baby dolls at fashion shows. Some other really sick 
stuff. And, you know, for us, it's very hard for us to parse, like, what is a, um, like, what is conspiracy? And then what is actually true? Right. But, you know, from what I have seen, the photos are correct in terms of their use of dolls that they had people wearing at fashion shows. And really on this ad campaign, I mean, they're trying to blame this ad company suing them for 25 million so far for extensive damages. But does the campaign really, do the, do the photo shoots just happen in a vacuum? Like somebody somewhere had to have editorial direction to try and put these teddy bears and put these kids in like, qua, like crazy I mean, they like don't even sexualized deny positions. their acceptance of that campaign. Okay. Um, they, you know, they say this was a wrong choice by Balenciaga. So that's the thing I keep coming back to right. is think up of this? all of the people that were involved in this. Right. And no one was like, guys, this is gross. Maybe let's come up with a different concept that doesn't involve kids hanging out with, you know, teddy bears with BDSM gear and like choker collars on the table. I mean, I want to know what the parents were thinking. I want to know what the photographer was thinking. I want to know what the people who came up with the campaign was thinking. I want to know what Balenciaga was thinking, thinking that this was okay to go forward with. It's disturbing on every single level. It's not the first time the fashion industry has played with like, you know, indulging the fantasies of pedophiles to yes. appear like glamorous or artsy or whatever the hell they think they're doing here. We're watching that um, documentary on Victoria's Secret mm -hmm. and Les Wexner. They had a fashion show that the whole theme was like children's bedtime stories and it was weird. But at least, I mean, they had grown-ups right. who were wearing like kids clothes and carrying around like lollipops. And I'm just like, what, what were you thinking about with this? So I don't know what to say about this. I just can't understand how every single person who was involved in this, how no one raised their hand and said, you know what, guys, let's kill this. This is not This is not right. This is not good. Yeah, I think what is really crazy, too, is that there are two separate ad campaigns. And one, as you said, clearly, uh, clearly was directed by Balenciaga. I also have no reason, I think, at this point to not think that they thought it was going to be good because apparently part of their whole ad campaign is about forcing consumers to grapple with the meaning of, quote, taste. So they're constantly trying to push the boundary. Be edgy, provocative, Be edgy, provocative, artsy, right. So you can see it in a pretentious, like, fashion way. But I think, you know, involving children, like, that's sick and deranged. So, look, I just think of the very basics who... I think there needs to be a very thorough investigation by possibly a law enforcement entity. I really think there's a sick person who is involved with those papers. Like there is something going on. You don't just happen to place those papers there. Like that is some, it could be one, it could be some others who are clearly are getting their rocks off, like even thinking about it and trying to put it out in the public sphere, possibly trying to normalize it. And then at the executive level, I mean, look, I don't know exactly what's happening here, but at a basic child exploitation, like, you know, they very much could be, um, they could be, uh, they could go after them for even putting kids in a situation like that. Like they shouldn't, even the models themselves, like should not be exposed to the sickness. So I, I don't have anything to say except for those sick. And I hope that- I think Kim's statement's kind of weak too. Oh, I, think I mean, she's clearly that. trying to sound the right notes here. I'm very right. concerned and this is disturbing. I don't understand how this could have happened. But at the, the end, she's like, yeah, I'm staying with them. And, and, and you know, We're evaluating that, our relationship. What is the point of being a billionaire if you can't say screw you to mm. people who uh, play footsie with pedophilia? Yeah. What well, is the remember, point? I mean, to go back to our previous yeah. segment about crypto, I mean, she right. was one of the ones who was like, actually right. <laughs> called out by the SEC yes. for uh, pushing one of these scam crypto uh, you know, schemes that ult ultimately ends up completely collapsing. Of course, she gets paid in cash, so it doesn't matter to her what happens right. to all the people who ultimately invested in this pile of dog poo that ends up instantly collapsing. So not a lot of scruples there. No, I, I just, I, I really don't get it. You know, she is just, she's a mom, she's like, she has multiple small kids. It's like, you should know better than anybody about how sick this is. And you know what, I don't know. I, I really don't know what to say. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.